In the beginning of the 90s, when Poland was fresh out of Iron Curtain, we were still a bit behind in electronics department. Most TVs were still black and white, and most electronics were a bit outdated, especially computers and game consoles. Everyone was still hooked onto 8-bit hardware, and most popular game console was Pegasus. Pegasus is a Fami clone, which means it's a clone of the Japanese version of Nintendo called Famicom. It came bundled with two gamepads with turbo buttons, a zapper and one cartridge, 168 in one. That cartridge was a bit special, not only because of nostalgia, but because of its functions. The full name of the cartridge is 168 in one New Contra Function 16. I don't know where that name came from, but I guess it doesn't really have to make sense. When you boot it up, you are welcomed with this really nice intro screen and a game list. It comes with some of the most popular games of the era, but their naming is kind of weird. Super Mario Bros, for example, is called Jogging Mario Bros. When you boot it up, it's just a normal Mario game. One thing worth noting is that Famiclone games play slower than original Nintendo games, because they are all based on Japanese versions of the game and have been imported to Europe. Japan is NTSC, 60Hz and Europe is 50Hz, so all of the games play roughly 20% slower. The music is slower, the gameplay is slower, that makes the games a bit more easy and a bit more mellow, especially noticeable in Mario Bros. Like a real proper bootlock cartridge, the games repeat on it, but they do not repeat straight. Every single version of the game has something different. For example, if we change pages and pick Jogging Mario Bros from page 3, we are greeted with a glitchy version of Mario Bros. It seems that scrolling is somewhat broken and it scrolls in the middle of the screen instead at the edge where we should not see it. So you can see what should come in the future, but those things are not real. They appear halfway up on the screen, but you cannot interact with them. And the things that that were previously there are still there, they are just not visible anymore. Playing this version is really weird and it's kind of hard to keep track of what is real and not, but you can also treat it as an extra challenge. One other terribly mangled version of Mario Bros is called Variant Bros. In this weird version, some of the graphics are swapped with Bomberman graphics. And instead of scrolling, the screen does this weird tearing thing when you reach halfway. Playing it for a long period of time is kind of impossible because of that, and your eyes start hurting really fast, especially when you run fast. And speaking of running fast, the version of Mario that I probably played the most is called Jumping Mario. In Jumping Mario, there is no limit to your velocity. So what happens is that even without holding dash button, you run as fast as you can without stopping. One thing that happens though, is that it starts glitching out if you run too fast. And contrary to the glitching Mario version, this glitch is real. So even though the scenery changes halfway across the screen, all of the changes are real. So for example, an endless pit can appear under your feet. One thing that this version of the game makes extremely easy is reaching the minus world. It's enough to reach world 1-2, then jump up on the ceiling and just keep running until the world starts glitching. When you stop somewhere along the end, you can see the warp zone even before it should appear and you can still see the piranha plants when you enter. This brings you to world minus one, which is unbeatable. Starting from number 93, the game starts with XO. This means that the games have cheat codes. Before you start the game, you are asked how many lives you would like to have. Weirdly, going left increases the number and going right decreases it. The lives can go up to 49, but if you want 99 lives, you can skip from 49 to 00, zero and then skip back one bit to have 99 lives. In some games the number might overflow and you might end up with a negative number of lives and they game over instantly after first death. The cheat codes come with all the games in all fashions. Some other games like Contra let you pick not only the number of lives, but also the starting level. Thanks to that you can pick up where you left off. Other games on the cartridge come in hacked versions as well. 
For example, Pac-Man with different graphics, Arkanoid with ball graphics instead of brick graphics, Battle City where the walls are replaced with bombs, or Tetris game with hearts instead of bricks. My favorite one though is called Sorcery Penguin. Sorcery Penguin is a Bomberman, but instead of the Bomberman graphics, we have this weird penguin guy. And we have not only all of the upgrades unlocked, but we are also invincible and can move through walls. So we can pass through walls, pass through enemies, we can plant as many bombs as we want to, and blow them up without hurting ourselves. It might not be the hardest game ever, but it's fun for a while. Another really the really cool thing about this cartridge is that it comes with Japanese exclusive games, and some of them are really interesting. One of them is Binary Land. In Binary Land, we control two penguins trying to reach the heart in the middle. The penguins are chased by spiders and can fall trapped to the spider nets. You control both of the penguins and their movement is mirrored. Whenever one of them falls trapped to a spider or a spider web, the other one must rescue it. Like a real Japanese game, it gets exponentially hard. So even the second level is hard hard, and the third level is simply impossible. It also comes with a bonus round where you just walk around and gather all the hearts. Another one is called Warpman. Warpman is really fun with two players. It's kind of like Battle City, but you're in space and there's nothing to protect and you just like walk around and shoot things. One cool thing about this game is that it has these two phases. Phase one is just you in outer space walking around on space and stars and shooting the enemies. But once in a while a portal will appear, and when you enter the portal, you will be transported to a maze. In a maze, instead of shooting, you will leave these mines, which the enemies will pick up and blow themselves up. Thanks to these interleaving patterns, the game is really fresh and can be played for a long time. The country also has two versions of Tetris, and none of them is the original Nintendo Tetris. One is the BPS Tetris. It is mostly known for its soundtrack, called Technotris. It was never really popular though, because of the weird movement pattern. The gamepad button sends the piece down, while pressing down will rotate the piece. This kind of setup just makes you want to swear at the game. But then, the amazing soundtrack just keeps you playing. The other Tetris game is Tengen Tetris. This is probably my favorite Tetris game ever. It comes with different game modes and some cheesy Russian music. And the really nice thing is that the pieces retain shape when you place them. The game is infamous for its exponential difficulty curve, but for lovers of Tetris this is not a problem. The game plays just like every Tetris game ever, but it's divided in stages. At the end of every stage, depending on how well you did, a bunch of Russian dancers will come to the screen and dance some Kazutrok. One of the most unique things about this game is the co-op mode. In co-op mode, two players play at the same screen. It is by no means easier than the original games. One, because you get twice as many pieces falling at every time. And two is because the pieces get in their way. So when you try to move around, you can block the other player from moving their piece whenever they want to. And you need to coordinate really well to be able to beat this. It's fun, but thanks to the exponential difficulty curve, it's really, really, really hard. Another one of these cool Japan exclusives is called Chack Pop. In Chack Pop you play as this doggy thing that walks around and can stick to ceiling and drops bombs. You can drop two bombs, one on your left side and one on your right side using the A and B buttons. You have to use the bombs to get rid of the eggs and free the heart. After some time the eggs start to hatch and from the eggs a familiar monster comes to life. The monsters chase you across the screen and as soon as you have freed the heart your task is to escape at the top right corner. The difficulty curve is incredible in the game. You can lose by getting eaten by the monster or blowing yourself up using the bomb. One of my favorites is Star Force. Star Force is a classic shoot em up, but it's also one of these never ending games. You play as a tiny ship who just blows through enemies and can destroy bases on islands in space. The scenery in the game is rapidly changing and varying, but there are no levels. You just keep going and going and going. And Every time you gather 50,000 points, a boss appears. The game gets rid of the scenery and shows you the boss, which then you have to destroy. After you do that, you get back into the level and just keep shooting and going. Another shooter on the cartridge is Macross. Macross is based on an old Japanese anime show about giant robots that I have never watched, but I love the music in this game and the pacing is great as well. You play as this starship that can transform into robot. 
shooting through enemies in what appears to be a giant space battle. After some time, you arrive at a space base and you enter attack mode. In attack mode, you need to get to the core of the base, try it to get to the next level. One of the games I probably spend the most time with is called Mappy. Mappy is a policeman mouse chasing after a gang of thief cats. Well, actually, the thief cats are chasing after Mappy and your job is to pick up stolen goods from a house. You move around the floors using trampolines, pick stolen stuff, open and close doors and you can also use power doors to get rid of some of the cats for a moment. When you pick all of the furniture, you will be moved to the next level. The game is well balanced and a bunch of new features come in with the new levels, like different floor designs, more doors or bells falling from ceilings. Also, this game has a really nice bonus level where you just jump around and pick up balloons. You need to be really strategic to be able to finish the bonus level before the song stops. That's it for 168 in 1. Hope you liked the video and let me know if you'd like to see more about bootleg Famiclone cartridges. Till next time!